Hi, thanks. Excited to be here and talking about aerial photography and a do-it-yourself system for aerial image map making. So aerial photography and aerial imaging are terms used for basically when you have a camera in the air that's not connected to a ground structure. So if you take this camera and you point it more towards the horizon, we call it oblique imagery. And if you point the camera straight down to the ground, it's called vertical imagery. And it's the vertical aerial images that are primarily used to make maps. So the uh, aerial photography and aerial imaging started in the late 19th century. It started with balloons and kites. And today we're going to talk about using balloons and kites in the digital age of map making. This is the oldest surviving aerial photograph. It's a view of Boston from 1960. So I'm from a community called Public Lab, and Public Lab is a community that's taking a civic science approach to environmental sensing, and it's a collaborative online community. It's an open source community. It's a place that has local chapters in cities, but at the same time an international network that's connected to a website. It's a place where there's lots of open source software, um, lots of GitHub projects. There's a lot of open hardware research using the uh, CERN open hardware license. And it's a place where there are all these collaboratively developed platforms. And by I say collabor collaboratively developed is important because it's all about individual users stepping in and iterating and hacking with their own ideas and tweaking designs, reusing products, using consumer off-the-shelf technologies and, and, and just working through the platform and, and, and making it better. So here's the industry's best. This is, this is the GOI satellite. It was operational um, this year, 2013. And the history of aerial image maps is really, has really um, been exclusively all about you know, commercial and industrial companies and the military. But at the same time, it's, it's really important for people to be involved in making maps. It's very important for citizens to have the knowledge and capacity to make their own maps. It's important for licensing reasons. It's important for also just getting the map that you want. A satellite flies over a place and does an acquisition at a specific moment in time. But these techniques that I'm talking about today are ground-based techniques where you can go get the map that you want, the place you want, at the time you want, and show what you want to show in your map. So it's a very important, powerful concept of being able to make your own map. So the platforms that I want to talk about are balloon and kite platforms. And Public Lab is using these platforms for a few different reasons. They are very easy to use. They are, um, you can set up both of these balloon and kite uh, uh, systems for doing these two different kinds of shooting, the oblique shooting or the vertical shooting. They're very low cost and inexpensive. And the systems are all about reusing uh, materials that you might already have access to. And the systems are also about being really easy to use. Um, being able to train a new person how to do these things, um, kind of getting more people involved. And another important element to these systems is regulations. You've probably heard lots of interesting things about UAVs lately, but they're highly regulated. These systems, you can go out and use them. You can go out and use them in public, go out in campus here on, at Davis, wherever you are, and go out and actually fly and, and, and take pictures and actually start making maps. And because it's a ground-based approach to map making, there's lots of interesting things that kind of go along with that. You can go off in a far off place on a, in, a, in a Jeep on a four by four trail and make a map there. This is um, uh, Eastern Kentucky. Or you could go off on the Gulf of Mexico in the center there and fly a kite off a boat. Or in the other image on campus here on Davis, we had a balloon that was filled with helium. And, once you have a balloon, you could lower it at the end of the day and use it again and again. You could use this balloon for three weeks straight. When we make these maps, these custom maps, you have all this control. You choose your resolution through your flying altitude. You, can, you choose your, your extent of the coverage of the map based on where you take the balloon or kite. So you move along with the balloon on the ground, just like a plane would fly over a surface, 
and you take lots of images, and then all these images come together in a master composite stitch, like this image of a map in Mississippi of the beach here. So you have a high resolution image composite that's from all these different images. So you're controlling where, the, where you're making your map, and you're controlling the amount of detail based on how high you fly and where you fly. In the summer of 2010, this grassroots mapping system was kind of formally applied for the first time around New Orleans when I was part of a group of people that put together kits that were basically volunteer kits. And the idea was that you go out and you get a kit, and then you take it to an affected area after the BP oil spill and shoot images. You go do your flight, you take all of your images, and then those images are brought together later on the computer to, be, to become maps. So since 2010, our community has mapped over 100 miles of high-resolution um, coastal areas in, in the Gulf region. So the mapping system, is, it's really easy to talk about. There's an indoor component and an outdoor component. And here we are with the outdoor component. It's, it's, it's doing the field work. So you have your gear, you have a meeting where you talk about what you want to do, where you want to map, any kind of safety considerations that you need to make, any, any kind of planning. And then you go out and you take your vertical pictures. And then when, you're, when, you're, when you have your data, you, the part two, you kind of come inside, you get in front of the computer, and you do the digital side of the map making. And we have an online open source tool for making the maps. It's called Map Knitter. And with Map Knitter, you take your, your raw aerial images, and one by one, you bring them into the, the, set, the setting, and you arrange the pictures, you save the data, it's all saved on, on the server, and when you export, you have your map data. And then we have an ar archive where all these maps are stored on the web. And each map has its own page where you have a title of the map, people that were involved in the map, the metadata, the time, uh, ground pictures, videos, any kind of ancillary information or stories from that map all come together on one page. And at the same time, this archive is a place where people can download the data and access it. And all the maps have licensing. So things like um, Google came along and took all of the public domain maps and put them into Google Earth and Google Maps. And they've been doing that like twice a year now. So lots of public lab community members are seeing their maps on their iPhone now in Google, which is just really great. And here's the platform in action on campus here at, at, at UC Davis. I was here in November of 2011. And this was around the Occupy movement was going on. And there was a big protest planned this day. And I, I came to campus to do some mapping with two public lab uh, members, Alex Mandel and Michelle Tobias, who are here on campus, invited me to come out and join them. And that day, it was actually pretty foggy. It was kind of a cold November morning. And we were only able to fly at like three to 400 feet above ground level. But we were still able to capture the whole scene of this protest. It's a specific moment in time that chances are a satellite wouldn't find with one uh, timed acquisition, but we were able to get our cameras in the air exactly where we wanted them and make this map. Here's the same map at one-to-one -one resolution. So we are out here and, and flying just below the fog bank, and overhead we could hear helicopters circling and Cessnas, but you couldn't see them because we were below the fog and they were above it. So we got the imagery that we wanted to get because we were doing it from the ground. And by the way, this is done with very inexpensive uh, camera. It only gets better than this. And uh, if you want to apply some uh, 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 better um, images and cameras to your workflow. But this is just done with uh, a smartphone, the, like the lowest end gear. Here are just a bunch of examples of types of maps that you can make with this system. You could really just go out and use this thing anywhere and, and however you wish. So it's really just about maps. And maps are connected to everybody. Everybody needs maps. So whether you have your own area of interest or you just want to promote, promote citizen-based mapping, there is some kind of benefit for you from this system. And I encourage all of you to try it out or just go look at some maps and support other people that are trying to make citizen-based maps for the public domain. And that's it. That's the system. Thank you very much.